Easter's in full bloom at Whole Foods Market with great deals on spiral cut bone in ham and leg of lamb, both crowd pleasers. Round out your spread with quiche, deviled eggs, and delicious catering platters from prepared foods. Oh, and remember to pick up a Whole Foods Market bunny cake from the bakery. Strap for time? They cater too, with delicious options available without the effort. Find hundreds of Easter deals and delights now at Whole Foods Market. In March, it feels like anything can happen. That three-day windstorm, for example. But April, April is full of potential. It's my house being a mess because I only want to be outside, wandering Water Street and meeting friends for beers in the Arts District. I'm alive. So today on CityCast Las Vegas, I'm here with local artist and man about town, Brent Holmes, and my co-host, David Figler, with our guide to loving April in Vegas. It's Tuesday, March 26th. I'm Sarah Lohman, and here's what Las Vegas is talking about. Fellas! Podcast bros, what's going on? Hey, I'm glad to be with a man about town. Hi, how's it going? Brent Holmes, man about town. And a woman about town. And me, I'm just a, I'm just a dude about downtown. I'm, I'm a gentle creature. A gentle creature about town. Yes. So okay. Cute. So like, it's April. Hopefully that was our, that three-day windstorm was enough for the whole spring. Um, what are you all up to, Brent? What are you doing this month? April's incredible because this is the best temperature baseline we're going to get yes. for the next yes. four months. So I, I like to be outside. Little trips to the desert. I'll, I'll hop yep. out to, to Red Rock, take the loop up, walk around, uh, go kiss some Joshua trees. I really mm. am loving Lone Mountain right now and their little yeah. park slash hiking trail up there. I think it's pretty terrific. And... On top of that, I am doing a lot of artwork because that's what Ooh, I do. Where? And I, I'm going to be showing at ASAP Gallery over in Orleans Square at the end of April. So I've got a lot of hustle to do. And oh, exciting. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a busy time for me. I've also got an exhibition coming up in Tacoma, Washington. So wow. between those two things, uh, I don't get that much time outside, let's say. But when I do, I really relish it. Yeah, and I do encourage everyone to just go give a Joshua Tree a pet. It's a very soothing experience. <laughs> but tell me more about this show. What's the name of the show at the ASAP? What's the focus? Is It's a solo show, right? Yeah, this will be a series of illustrations I've created in a kind of black cowboy oeuvre using ancestral masking imagery oh, yeah. and classic a uh, cowboy agit prop. I like to actually refer to it as propaganda <laughs> because I think most of the cowboy mythos is propaganda. Uh, oh. But but so I'm I'm using that to create some very stark black and white images, just ink on paper, relatively simplistic with like a little bit of depth underneath. And that's going to be like a week long show. First of all, if people want to learn more about the history of black cowboys, you and I did an episode about that. We we'll we'll yeah. link it in the show notes. How fun. What's the time for the opening reception, date and time for your, your solo show? Uh, I believe it'll be April 18th or 19th, depending on how uh, <laughs> quick I am to get everything hung up. We'll link it. And um, yeah, I'm really excited to see this work because I love this topic. All right, David, what are you up to this month? Well, like Brent, I do enjoy this time as my outside time. Uh, you'll see me tooling around on my bicycle around the downtown area, <laughs> which is a rarity for sure. But also, there's my theater downtown, which I'm really excited about. So uh, we're season ticket holders to Majestic Repertory Theater. Oh, and cool. their final production of the year uh, is launching in April. And so we're going to check out Ride the Cyclone, uh, which looks totally fun. It's a musical. I mean, Majestic is wonderful. You know, other theaters around, too. And, and there's a, a really nice production out in Henderson, which would be outside of my comfort zone, which is like an April <laughs> thing, too. I'll hold to your get hand. Out. Yeah, but I'm really interested in seeing the Titus Andronicus. Uh, oh, that's in Henderson. Yeah, that's over on uh, oh, Wigwam. Yeah. There's uh, They're setting up a tent. That's only running through April 6th. Oh, so I, I do have to kind of get in there under the wire. Uh, a good friend of mine, an actor, his name is Eric Amblad, is in it. But yeah, it's a it's a Nevada Shakespeare company, and they're doing it in conjunction with the City of Henderson. It looks like it's a great time. So uh, the, April will be filled with a little bit of theater for me. All right. Well, send me a text when you get your ticket for Titus Andronicus, because I would come to see that. 
Absolutely. Yeah, if you guys if you guys want to book on that, I I will I want to go as well. That sounds yes, amazing. Yes, let's have an outing. I, like I I would kill for some good Titus Andronicus. I'll take Shakespeare okay. every day of the week. I also left one thing out. Yeah, is that it's in the style of a grindhouse film. Oh. Okay. Well, now this is a whole so other level. It's adults David, only. You, you, you undersold, David. and that's incredible. <laughs> I mean, I'm a fan of this show because Julie Taymor did that big production in the 90s that I was obsessed yeah. with. Well, yeah. Act One is a, like in the in the uh, form of a slasher flick, and Act Two is in a revenge flick. So this oh does God. really sound interesting. We're going. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. We'll start a text thread. Honest, honest to goodness. I mean, like the both of you, I don't want to be inside. There's some dire consequences to that in that I'm inside creating filth like piles of dishes, but don't have the patience to then deal with the filth. So, like, the house is messy, although Vogue is coming over to co-work with me outside. Vogue so Robinson! Vogue Robinson. Co-host. At least she's coming over this weekend, so at least I have a deadline to get my shit together. Um, but mostly it's because I've been in my backyard. I think I mentioned to you too, Brent, you've seen my house. I moved into a house uh, in June. David, you haven't had the chance to be over yet because you were sick for the holiday party. But it has a backyard <laughs> space. So this is really my first full season. Like last season was just sort of like getting it not to be full of garbage. And now I'm trying to like plant and grow and landscape. And I have something specific that I'm trying to find that maybe you two or the listeners can help me track down. I really want to put a passion fruit vine in. So my favorite Instagram garden follow, Desert Secret Garden, she's got a passion fruit vine and apparently they do amazing here. They're evergreen and they like really grow big and they'll like put out fruit a couple times a year, like fresh passion fruit. And then the blossoms on passion fruits are crazy. They're, they kind of look like, have you seen the popcorn buckets for Dune? But yeah. like pink and purple, like that. I'm on the hunt. If anybody knows somewhere local, which is my preference, that I can get one, please send us an email. I'm going to put uh, the email in our show notes. Email me. Let's talk about what we're excited to eat this month. Okay, I want to go first because I am so pumped about the new Esther's location. I went for the first time in December. A friend of mine was coming in to perform at the Fountain Blue opening. And so I picked her up. We squeezed in a bar seating at the old, like, tight, convivial location. Had amazing cocktails. We had an amazing time. So I think, of course, as anybody living in Vegas has heard, they've moved to a huge new space in the corner. David, you and I were out and about last weekend in the beautiful weather. And we just did, like, a little walkthrough to see this space because you've already been there, like, four times. Yeah, I mean, it's my neighborhood. It's downtown, and I love it. And so, yeah, we've really enjoyed all of the new Esters and what it has to offer. And, like, it's big city restaurant, man. I mean, yeah. they, they just knocked out of the ballpark. Yeah, they really did. I uh, Actually, uh, uh, Secret, uh, I have been doing the illustrative work for their new cocktail menu. Oh, and, wow. Uh, so when you go in, once the cocktail menu is available, which it should be by mid-April, uh, those are my drawings and designs. Oh. Uh, I mean, I'm going to steal yeah. one and have you sign it. That's oh. it. <laughs> I mean, I love, you know, they also have Jerry Miscos that are up in there. And they really have taken sort of their place in locals' hearts to to heart themselves. And it is a celebration of, you know, big city local place. I love it. Yeah. Brent, what else is going on with you? What are you excited to eat this month? I'm, I'm just really lucky because I just got a place in Chinatown. So... A lot of my favorite eats are within walking distance. And the best part about April what is great neighborhood. dining al fresco, right? Yeah. Um, you have some really terrific patios. Uh, I really like the one over at Rira Thai in Shanghai Plaza. And mm-hmm. then uh, if you're feeling a little cafe-ish, there's Take It Easy, which is uh, Makers and Finders uh, ancillary o- location in Chinatown. And they have a terrific patio. Oh, so coffee, pastries, foodsies? Coffee, yeah, and, and yeah. Pinatas. And pinatas. Empanadas, okay. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a can't can't lose kind of vibe. Uh very coffee shop, very small and and kind of refreshing in that like coffee shop culture you miss from larger cities. It has that vibe. And then uh I just found out Shizuya Cafe is taking over the Halfbird space right around the corner from Take It Easy and they make amazing Japanese, bakery, Japanese right? pastries. Yeah. They, they yeah, make yeah. Japanese pastries. All those uh uh you know souffle cheesecake kind of things. And and that's Ooh. that's really Fun. terrific and yummy too. So you could grab some baked goods, grab a latte out of uh, Take It Easy and sit out on the patio. Love it. Yeah. It's so a perfect good. April day. All right. David, I know you're very tied into openings, new restaurant openings. Is there anything opening up in April that we should be aware of? 
Oh, yeah. And, you know, and, and April is kind of like my first uh, explore and adventure. And I try to do as much outside stuff as yeah. possible as you should, uh, but also break out of my like downtown bubble. And here's mm. the thing, like there's so many new things popping up all the time downtown, but I, I'm in walking distance of that. Where do I need to go drive? And so I saw that there was a, a neat new spot opening up. It's scheduled for opening up April 6th. So maybe like shortly thereafter, in fact, maybe even April 7th, might go check out uh, Early Birds. Now, Early Birds Early is birds. way out. Yeah, it's on, for me, way out. Um, it's on Blue Diamond and Durango. That is way out. For me, for sure. Yeah. The restaurant group, it's called 8182. They do a lot of stuff that's in the hotel space with like craft cocktails and some speakeasies. And they also do um, the one that's in Chinatown. I always forget the name. Uh, Mas, por favor. Los Mas Dos. <laughs> <laughs> Just Mas kidding. Por favor. That's my new Did restaurant. I say it right? Yeah. I Mas said it right. Por... It's Mas Por Favor. I said it Sorry. right. I said it right. <laughs> I had it right, right, right. Um, yeah. So Mas Por Favor, which is a really cool street taco with a speakeasy in the back. Mm. So I'm like really curious what they're going to be doing out there. Um, they're touting just really fun comfort food. Uh, I'm very blessed to have Winnie and Ethel down right in my neighborhood. So sure. I'm going to go check out another neighborhood. Winnie and Ethel's can be packed, though. Yeah, it does. That's the thing, especially on the weekends. And I'm guessing this place will be, too. They probably have a big following. But I'm looking forward to, like, trying an Irish Benedict, which is, like, mm. corned beef hash on a Benedict. And I love that. I love, love that very much. That. But if I'm going to be out that far for me... Like, I'm going to make a day of it. Yeah. So I'm going to, like, maybe circle back on Blue Diamond and head down the 15 to Good Springs because my partner has never been to the Pioneer Saloon. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God, yes. Which, you know, has indoor-outdoor space. They do bands on the weekends, like, around noon. So I mean, it's a post, serious biker bar out there, too. Post-breakfast. Well, that's the Pioneer. It's yeah, historic. Yeah. You know, it's storied. But they do bands. And then I think um, April 7th is actually something called National Beer Day, whatever, those national yeah. designated days. But that means they're going to have some, like, really cool local beers, I'm guessing. So it's going to be, like, a fun festive time out at the Pioneer, which is a great time to be out at the Pioneer, especially when there's live music. And then, yeah. you know, depending on how things go, maybe we'll go check out Seven Magic Mountains, which, you know, this time of year yeah, is right a good there. time of year to kind of chill out there right by there. Um, God, you sunset. know, you don't really have to worry about it. Yeah. So good. Yeah. We could just time that as a perfect, like, get out on the outskirts of town a day uh, around a brand new restaurant. So that's kind of the game plan. Brent, um, do you have any Pioneer Saloon memories? Um, no, most of them are blackouts. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's it's one of the best catch a desert vibe places you can go. Seriously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every time I've been out there, it's been epic. The first time I went on a full moon, and not only did we go to Pioneer Saloon, but there the Good Springs Cemetery is on the way back. And it's not open in the night, but it is open during the day. And it is an amazing, like, Old West, like, poke around. Then on the way back, again, full, like, full moon, middle of the night, there was a barn owl in the middle of the road. It's wild. I'll repost this on my Instagram. Um, but then the next time it was for my birthday, and this very drunk man went around the table. He asked us if he could tell us what our futures would be. And so he went around to the whole table on my birthday and told everyone their fortune. Yeah. That guy Always died 25 years ago, by the way. <laughs> so when did you <laughs> when did you see him? It was actually Large March is, is who I saw. Tell him Large March. <laughs> so amazing. Yeah, definitely interested to check out Early Birds too. Okay. So here is our new feature, uh, our event of the month. Do, 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 do. Like if you had to pick one thing. Just one? Just one. This no. is like you are making time for this no matter what. One event, what what would it be? 420. The city Stop of Las it. Earth Day is 420. Earth Day is on 420. Uh, the city of Las Vegas is having an Earth Day event with uh, arts collective Rao Wow. Rao Rao. Yeah. Um, and Rau -rau? they got Rao Rao. Uh, Rau -rau? Part, yeah. Uh, shout out to Coco Jenkins. Shout out to Nothing to Do LV. Um, they're doing they're doing a whole whole day vendors, food trucks. Uh, they they're encouraging you to ride your bicycles down there. They got a bike valet. Their headliners Olmeca. They have Noir Movement, Teen Wolf. It's a lot of really good local bands. A couple bands from out of state. Uh, it should be a really incredible day to go to the park. It's over at Lorenzi Park, and uh, it's it should be really fun. 
you can take the kids. If you wanted something a little more adult, I'm sure there are more than enough 420 adult events, right? <laughs> Yeah, uh, and this is, it, it's it's Earth Day Observed. It is technically on 422, but this is the 420 Earth Day party because, you know, the ganja she grows from Mother Earth. So <laughs> why not the, celebrate? The ganja she grows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, Fred, that sounds great. What about you, David? What are you looking forward to? Okay, so uh, again, I am disappointed. I have to just pick one thing because I'm certainly not going to miss our friend Kim Foster's University Forum Lecture Series talk. What? That's happening on Thursday, April 18th, where she's talking about the dysfunction of food, food that isn't beautiful or comforting or delicious. That's Ooh, such a yeah. Kim Foster topic, yeah, and is. I love every second of it. So I will 100% be there. The big event, though, that I'm like— I just want to clarify, contributor to CityCast Las Vegas, Kim yes. Foster, and yes. also James Beard Award-winning writer and author. Yeah. So right. much. And also do-gooder and keeper mm -hmm. and distributor of social Kindness capital. person, yeah. Yes, and frequent podcast uh, contributor um yeah but i think the one that's like kind of like big event like maybe i need to go check it out is neil degrasse tyson over at the smith center doing a spoken cool. wordy deal whoa yeah. this is up your alley yeah, so far up your alley david is the spoken word about science oh Space yeah so science? you know let's hope so because he's you know <laughs> He's a man. Floated. He's got he, other things He's going floated on. into some difficult terrain. He has. But this one yeah. is called Astronomy Bazaar. And mm. it's essentially him talking about everything in the universe that's cool and scary. Black holes, dark matter, dark energy, diamond stars, gamma ray bursts, white holes, wormholes, and multiverses. And I want to be there for all of that. So mm -hmm. that's April 14th at the Smith Center. Tickets are still available. So Okay. Yeah. Actually, it looks like he's doing two shows that day. Is that possible? Ooh, yeah, it's possible as long as you've got some good snacks in the green room. Yeah, all right. Some God space bless. snacks. Brent, are you a Neil deGrasse Tyson fan? You know, I've had so. Of course, I'm a Neil deGrasse Tyson fan. I'm a white skinned black man in America. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I get the uh, you know you remind me of Neil deGrasse Tyson every once in a while, and it's the it's one of the better compliments I can I can get Is backhandedly. It? I I mean. He's he's the pinnacle of nerdy blackness in this country. Uh, he's I don't necessarily see the corollary, but I consider it complimentary regardless. You know, it's your accent. I will give them that. You've got that East Coast, New Jersey accents. I'm hearing it. Yeah, yeah it's your it's, it's, it's your masterful control of logic in the face of ridiculousness. <laughs> and I think that that's why you probably get that, Brent. I mean, there is a part of me, I'm still thinking about jumping on a plane and going to Cleveland to see the eclipse, which is not going to grace us with its, its presence on Monday, April 8th. Um, but I will tell you what's going to be fucking sick this month <laughs> is the Las Vegas Preservation Society's Home and History. Is that, no, oh, excuse me, it's, a, it's the NPF, the Nevada Preservation Foundation's Home and History. <laughs> I am so excited. I went last year, I saw... Richard Hooker, who you know, David, did this amazing walking tour. And he's like a longtime Las Vegan, used to yeah. work for the mayor, mayor's office. He's one of the people that helped getting the, get the Nia Museum going. And the he, book festival. And the book festival. I mean, this guy yeah. has like, he's ingrained in like boosting culture. And he does this downtown walking tour that is, I mean, it's so hidden and unique Fremont Street. Um, it's 45 bucks and you get a cocktail at the end. And sometimes a cocktail in the middle too, honestly. <laughs> and I went last year, but it sounds like there's even more stuff because one of the things he's advertising is that you're going to see the oldest hotel room in the city. Ooh. I know. And like a streamlined modern slot machine said to have inspired the architecture of downtown's newest hotel. Like it was what I saw last year was full of secrets. And it just makes me feel really awesome to be able to like now take friends through that neighborhood and be like, come here, I want to show you a secret. So I highly recommend his tour, which is going on both Friday and Saturday. Oh, I should say the weekend is April 25th through 27th. Right. And all of the events, which they're continuing to add to, are on the Nevada Preservation Foundation's website. The Tiki House is on that one too, isn't it? I I'm think that's going sold to out, that event. That looked so cool. Yeah. Okay. So my friend Jen over at Neon, who's up on things, is got me the ticket. So there is a cocktail night at the Tiki House. Uh, oh. The Lava House is its, its official name. Mm -hmm. exotic mid-century compound that was home to formal home of a Las Vegas casino mogul, 
like incredible interior and it's like a cocktails and hors d'oeuvres situation. And then the other one that I'm going to, Behind the Barriers, an insider's view of the Clark County Museum. So it says, we'll open up the plexiglass dividers and historic houses, step into normally off-limits storage spaces, and take a look at the museum's collection of Las Vegas casino ephemera. That's Friday and Saturday afternoon as well. Clark County Museum is right down the block from me. So I am so excited. Yeah, NPF does such a good job. We have a very busy April ahead of us Um, because it is the best month to be outside until October, although last year it was cool until June, which I particularly appreciated. Absolutely. April. Yeah, I'm coming for you. (laughs) All right. I'm going to write some poetry, too. Why not? Seems like the thing to do. Seems like the month. Yeah. Yeah. All right, gentlemen. Thank you so much. See you next month. See you next month. Yeah. And we'll see you out there in April. We're going to be all around. See you at Titus Andronicus. I'm starting this Titus. Yeah. Roadhouse. Grindhouse version. Yes. is all for today here on CityCast Las Vegas. If you enjoyed the show, why not tell a friend, rate the show? You know what? Send this to someone that you want to get out and about in April with. We've got some great suggestions here. And if you want this in written format, it'll be in our morning newsletter with links. So you should subscribe to Hey Las Vegas as well. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Take care. I think if you're over 30 and you're still like deep into the prankery, you need to find mm. something better to do. That's 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 mm. uh, you know, that's my hot take. Ouch. Hot take. Psst, psst, psst. We all hate April Fools. Don't do it. Don't fool me. I'll end our friendship. We also hate tax day. <laughs>